All right, this is part one to the Micro J10 build. I built this using the electronics from the UMX Micro F16, which I got the electronics here. And you're gonna install them on the Micro J10 the same way you pull them out of the Micro F16. As you can see here, so the board's gonna face the same way. The CG is gonna still fall right in the, near the back of the circuit board there. And the servos, of course, are gonna be placed on the bottom. Same way you take them off the UMX F16. And you'll even be able to use the control rods that come off the F16 for your first link here to your control horn. And of course I continue it on from that control horn back to the thrust vector one. A little thrust vector nozzle. Alright, so what I first did was here I got a set of the plans. I already jumped ahead. Went ahead and cut out my pieces. Which is very really very simple. I didn't even shoot a video on cutting them out. Here I got the top of the main fuselage. And what I like to do is cut them all out. Go ahead and do a lot of your painting, which I actually just use uh, Sharpie markers. You got blue, red, black, a bunch of different colors. But once I cut these out of the plans, I do all my artwork on all the pieces before I even go cutting out for ailerons or elevons. So before I even cut the elevons in or any any before I do any cutting I'll go ahead and do my artwork on them and as you can see here I got the, the main airframe I cut out Here's the bottom pieces two of them Got my canards, two of those. Here's the bottom nose of the jet. And again, top of the main fuselage. Yeah, so I went ahead and painted my artwork on them first, then went ahead and cut out for the rudder there. Just so that way you ain't got a marker and try to mark around there where that cutout is. Alright, so I'm going to jump right into uh, building the thrust tube, which is right here. This is using the E-Flight Delta V 180. It's the same EDF unit that come out of the Micro F-16, 13,500 kV. Now to build the thrust tube, you can see here it's a four and a quarter total length, which I don't go by that right off the bat. And at the back of the thrust tube, you want it to narrow down to seven eighths of an inch. You can go slightly smaller if you like. It's not really going to make a big difference. <clears throat> but I wouldn't go much smaller than seven eighths of an inch at the back of the thrust tube. You're just going to be killing the power. Alright, so what I did here is here I got the 180 ducted fan unit, low 5 blade. And for the back of the thrust tube, which I just measured from the back of the EDF housing, the back there, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out of a, a paper plate cut the center square out of a paper plate and that's what I used to wrap to make my thrust tube at the back of course you just take and fold this up and start working it into a circle the more you roll it the better it'll 
turn out to be a circle. Just try to get it nice and tight without creasing it anywhere. So that's how I've been making my thrust tubes. Basically like that guys. So, I mean I'd glue this and then cut it out. You guys can do it in many different ways. You can even make a thrust tube out of these little foam cups. Like what I did on this Micro J10. You'll see I cut off the back of the cup, wrapped it around, then put another second piece. Then I used the brim of the cup for the intake. So it's a good idea to use the foam plate or the paper plates. So once I did that, I went ahead and wrapped it around the back of the EDF housing. And instead of gluing this on, I mean, I I made my thrust tube and then I took and slid it on the back and then I just go ahead and put a piece of clear tape all the way around it. I'm sure you can see there. That way I don't get no glue on this housing or nothing and I can use it for another jet in the future. So again I just slid it onto the back of the housing and this here is just the top, top edge of a foam cup. I cut off the top, worked it into a circle, and I make this the slide on here. And I'll usually leave maybe three sixteenths of an inch of the white foam sticking up. You just want enough to get that round on the very edge. Where, it's, where the air is being sucked in, if it comes over that nice round part, it goes in a lot faster and smoother, more efficiently. So then once I built my EDF unit, like I got here, and this one's a little longer than the one that's on the plans. I mean, you can make, I don't recommend making it a little longer, but I went ahead and did. So once I made my EDF unit, I'll even go ahead and put a few pieces of clear tape, small little pieces to hold this on before I install it in the jet. Let's take the top, put it over here. Yeah, so go ahead and do your artwork. Then you can cut out, what I like to do is before I even cut the V-notch, this is the top of the fuselage, before I even cut the V-notch out for the Elevon, I took and ran a piece of clear scotch tape across the whole bottom where the bend is going to be on the Elevon. That's what I like to do first, well after the artwork anyway, do your artwork. Put the clear tape and then go ahead from the top and notch, V notch it and then you got your elevons. Now for the thrust vector pieces in the back, I went ahead and V notched it from the top also. But again I went ahead and applied clear scotch tape across where it's going to hinge before I V notched it. There we got our little thrust vector nozzles. And again, make sure you cut your V-notch out at the top of the main airframe, not from the bottom. So again, apply your artwork, then cut out for your elevons with your clear scotch tape on there. And moving into sticking the EDF unit onto the jet. You know, everybody's EDF unit is going to turn out a little differently than than mine. I mean, it might be a little shaped a little differently. So what I recommend doing is don't don't try to cut out with your first cutout being in the fuselage of the jet here or the main airframe. I went ahead and practiced on a piece of scrap foam. So I went ahead and laid this on there. Actually, without this on there. I just laid across a piece of top of a foam, 
trace around it. Then you pull this away. Try it on a few pieces of separate foam if you have to until you get the right to the right size. And as you can see there, I got it to fit pretty pretty good. I, I like to make it as tight as I can, the EDF unit to the foam, because I just want to use foam safe glue when I tack this in. I don't like to use any hot glue because it just adds weight to the plane, to the jet. So make sure you cut, take your time cutting out for your EDF unit. Like I said, I went ahead and did it in a piece of scrap, a couple of pieces of scrap foam first. And then what I did is I found the center with a ruler. I drew a line down the center of the fuselage to, from the nose to between the two thrust vector flaps. And then that way I was able to center this on here. And for the, e the front of the EDF unit, or the EDF housing, it's actually 10 and a quarter inches. You're going to measure this back. So from the nose of the jet to the front of the EDF housing, it's 10 and a quarter. We've got a ruler here to double check. Yep, 10 and a quarter. And that's going to be from the tip of the jet, nose of the jet, to the very front of your EDF housing. You want to get that right because when you install your electronics and the battery, you want every, the CG to be right where, where I have it on the plans. Alright, so now that I did that, like I said, I went ahead and cut it out in a scrap foam, then laid this on here lined up the marks I made and I went ahead and traced it on the main airframe pulled that one away and then went ahead and cut out and of course once I did that I went ahead and slid the front of the EDF unit on and I just traced out around that like I said, I want a nice tight fit. I'm just going to use foam safe glue to install this. You want to make sure when you install the EDF, the thrust tube and the EDF unit, that you got exactly half and half over the thrust vector nozzles. There's half of the thrust tube showing and half showing at the top. Same thing with the front. You want it centered between the airframe and the EDF housing. Just like that. And as you can see, mine fits in there nice and tight because I took my time and cut it out nice and tight. Did it practiced on some scrap foam. And again, your EDF unit is supposed to be a little shorter. I made mine a little longer. Didn't matter to me. But on the plans, you'll see your EDF unit will come up a little, be a little shorter. Just like this one here. Like I said, you can use a foam cup too to build the thrust tube unit. You can see there's half of the thrust tube showing at the top and bottom. Same thing for the looking down the nose. So that's just part one of the Mick J10 build. Just wanted to show you guys how I was doing my thrust tube and building it, installing my EDF unit. Then again, for when you go to install the top of this. You'll just set this on here and do some practice and make sure you do some practice scrap pieces before you cut out where the EDF unit's going to 
fit here. It's got to be like that. Again, I'll just probably, what I'll probably do is cut this piece right in half, then stick it over the top of that. I'll probably show you that right now. Which sometimes works perfect. like that of course you'll have to cut out for your uh, top of the foam cup that's on there that'll also give you the idea of what you need to cut off the top of the main fuselage that's just another there's a million other ways guys do it it's just one of my ways of doing it but all right that's part one of the micro j10 build i'll pick back up on part two and i'll start assembling some of these pieces together all right over now